that this Assembly agrees to the extension to Northern Ireland of a number of provisions within the Birmingham Commonwealth Games Bill relating to the creation of a new offence which prohibits the unauthorised sale or resale of games tickets. Thank you. I call the Minister of Justice, Mrs Naomi Long, to move the motion. Minister. I beg to move. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed there should be no time limit to this debate. Please open the debate on the motion, Minister. Thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. The purpose of the Bill is to provide a number of temporary operational measures required to support the delivery of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games in 2022. A number of the provisions contained in the Bill extend only to England and Wales, however others extend to the whole of the UK. These provisions that will extend to Northern Ireland relate to the creation of a new offence which prohibits the unauthorised sale or resale of games tickets. The Bill was originally introduced to Parliament in the autumn of 2019, but fell prior to the general election. It was subsequently reintroduced in January 2020. The Bill has now completed its passage in the House of Lords and is due to have its report stage and third reading in the House of Commons in the coming weeks. At the outset, can I reassure you that members of the public will legitimately be able to sell spare tickets. This legislation is aimed at those seeking to obtain financial gain. Members may recall that similar provisions were introduced for both the London Olympic Games in 2012 and also for the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in 2014. A person found guilty of this offence in Northern Ireland would be liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding £50,000. In Northern Ireland, the fines on summary conviction, which are triable in a magistrate's court, do not generally exceed £5,000. In this case, the level of fine is set as a deterrent with the intention to prevent criminal activity such as money laundering. The offence carries the same penalty in Scotland. In England and Wales, the offence will be punishable by an unlimited fine. It is not possible to have unlimited fines on summary conviction in Northern Ireland, so the fine here must be defined. When considering the level of fine in this case, the Department took the following points into consideration. Firstly, that this is a UK-wide offence, so there is a need to maintain alignment between the levels of fine in Scotland and Northern Ireland, and insofar as is possible, with England and Wales. Secondly, that colleagues in the Department for Communities have given their interest in sport and have agreed the need for parity. And thirdly, that the level of fine is commensurate with the, ch the changing nature of the online ticketing market. DCMS has indicated that the expected number of prosecutions under this offence will be very low. In terms of whether or not this could be brought via the Assembly, I think members will appreciate um, that I am normally of a view that we should bring legislation to this House um, and take it through the normal procedures here. However, I think members will appreciate that we are somewhat out of step in the normal processes. Generally, Executive and Justice Committee approval should have been in place prior to the Bill being introduced in Parliament in Westminster. In this case, my Department were unable to do so as the Assembly was not sitting at that time. However, Permanent Secretary Agreement in principle was obtained. On the return of the Assembly, officials sought my views and I subsequently wrote to the Chair of the Justice Committee at the earliest opportunity and sought approval from Executive colleagues. That approval was obtained on the 2nd of March. The Justice Committee agreed to provisions extending to Northern Ireland at their meeting on the 14th of May and to the, the laying of this LCM. I believe that given the advanced stage of the Bill and the very tight timescales involved, that it would not have proven practically possible to legislate locally on this matter. Westminster colleagues are keen to have the request considered as soon as possible, as the timescales are somewhat challenging. I am keen, therefore, to seek legislative consent today, but I am also keen to hear the views of members of this Assembly, and I look forward to the debate which will follow. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. I call the Chair of the Justice Committee, Mr Paul Given. Thank you, Principal De uh, Deputy Speaker, and again, ha I'm happy to speak on behalf of the Committee for Justice in this uh, debate. Uh, the Department of Justice did write to the Committee uh, in March advising of the proposed uh, LCM for the Birmingham Commonwealth Games Bill. That bill introduces a number of temporary operational measures to support the delivery of the Commonwealth Games being held in Birmingham. Uh, between the 27th of July and the 7th of August in uh, 2022. Uh, the bill uh, will enable the Secretary of State to provide financial assistance uh, to the organising committee and includes provisions in relating to advertising, trading, transport uh, and ticket touting. 
The majority of the bill, uh, uh, the bill's provisions apply to England and Wales only, uh, though a number extend to the whole of the United Kingdom, and this includes the powers to provide financial assistance and reporting obligations for the organising committee. Uh, though consent is not required for these provisions due to their incidental nature on matters within this Assembly's competence, uh, consent is, however, required for the creation of a new offence uh, prohibiting the unauthorised sale or resale of tickets, uh, commonly known as ticket touting. Uh, the Bill also provides for a fine of up to £50,000 uh, for those found guilty of this offence on summary conviction uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, currently, penalties for summary offences in Northern Ireland do not generally exceed £5,000. Um, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, in view of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the Committee agreed that this LCM would be considered as a written briefing in the first instance, and an oral briefing could be considered at a later stage if this uh, was necessary. Papers were therefore considered, uh, or were issued to members on the 5th of May for our consideration. Um, it was noted at the time that the Department of Justice had engaged with the Department for the Economy and the Department for Communities on the proposed LCM, given their respective roles in enforcement and sporting matters. However, while the Department of Justice confirmed the DFC did not raise any issues, no indication of DFE's uh, uh, views was provided to the committee. Uh, the committee therefore uh, sought clarification of that department's uh, po uh, position from the Department of Justice on the 7th of May, and the Department of Justice responded on the 12th of May, advising that the Department uh, for uh, Economy had confirmed with the Department for Culture, Media and Sport that it had no difficulty with the enforcement rule and had not expressed any concerns with the proposed offences and penalties. Uh, the committee was also advised that neither the Minister for the Economy nor the Minister for Communities had raised any concerns with the proposed LCM at an executive level. Uh, the committee agreed at the meeting on the 14th of May that it was content with the proposed LCM. The memorandum was subsequently laid by the Department of Justice on the 15th of May. The committee was made aware that in order to meet the Westminster legislative timetable, it would be necessary to schedule uh, the debate for today's proceedings. Uh, to facilitate the passage of the LCM and to enable the requirements of the relevant standing order to be met, the memorandum uh, was issued to committee members via correspondence, and the majority of members responded to confirm that they were content with the LCM. Uh, while content with the LCM, the committee requested further information from the Department of Justice on practical enforcement matters on the 20th of May, including whether the Department uh, had any role in enforcement, how a member of the public may legitimately sell a spare ticket. Uh, in response, the Department advised that enforcement of provisions that extend to Northern Ireland will be the sole responsibility of the trading standards services in the Department for Economy. Uh, the Committee was also advised that a ticketing strategy is currently in development. And this is expected to include an authorised resale platform for ticket holders who find that they are no longer able to attend an event. At its meeting on the uh, 28th of May, the Committee for Justice formally agreed that it was content with the proposal to extend to Northern Ireland by way of an LCM a number of provisions in the Birmingham Commonwealth Games Bill relating to the creation of a new offence which prohibits the unauthorised sale or resale of games uh, tickets. I can confirm a set out in the committee report that the Committee for Justice supports uh, the Minister of Justice in seeking the Assembly's endorsement of the legislative consent motion, and they, therefore uh, I am happy to endorse the approach that has been taken. Very briefly, speaking just as an individual member, um, the, the Minister has outlined um, the approach that has been taken. I think that is entirely understandable, um, uh, the approach that has been outlined, and uh, I would agree with the, the comments that the Minister has made. Um, aside to the importance of how we are managing the ticketing, let me use this opportunity to say what a fantastic uh, opportunity we have in 2022 that the Commonwealth Games will be held uh, just across the water in Birmingham. Uh, and I know many of us that are uh, keen sporting enthusiasts will want to wish uh, all of our athletes every success uh, and, and those that will want to go and support them. This is an important piece of work in preparation for the logistics of it, uh, but at the heart of this will be a fantastic uh, sporting experience, uh, and I look forward to, to cheering on people. I note um, that uh, in the Republic of Ireland, elite, elite athletes have been able to start training again. It is really something that we need to be facilitating 
here in Northern Ireland that our athletes can get back uh, to providing uh, training. I declare a slight interest in that, not that I am one of those elite, elite athletes. Uh, I do have family members, however, um, that uh, are, are involved in elite sport. Uh, and, uh, I'll leave it at that, but I've made the pitch. I think the chair was in danger of veering away from the content of the motion, but um, I call Mr. Pat Catney. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and uh, I thank the Minister for the statement here today. The LCM supports the creation of an offence which prohibits unauthorised sale or resale of tickets for Commonwealth Games due to take place in Birmingham in July. And August 2022, the offence aims to safeguard the sale of tickets for the games from any money laundering activity and keeps the tickets affordable. Uh, the bill does not intend to prevent the legitimate resale of the tickets. The tickets holders who can no longer attend will be able to pass on their tickets to family or friends, provided this is not done in the course of business for profit or in a public place. <clears throat> the Commonwealth uh, Games Delivery Unit of the Department of Culture, Media and Sport have advised that the organising committee's ticketing strategy is currently in development with the annual tickets not likely to be sold before summer 2021. Uh, it is anticipated that the strategy will include an authorised resale platform for those ticket holders who can no longer legitimately attend. The SDL believe, be, believes it is important that ticket holders from Northern Ireland have an extra layer of protection to allow for the potential breakdown in travel planning. In the event of a flight or ferry crossing being unavailable or cancelled, all ticket holders should be enabled to retain their tickets while attempting to secure alternative travel. In this unfortunate event that travel cannot be secured, swift access to a last-minute authorised resale platform should be easily available, with information on the process to follow printed clearly on the actual ticket. Uh, we all hope to see an ease of access to travel resume long before 2022, where we now live in a world where it does no harm to attempt to future-proof and mitigate against possible disruptions. Uh, like my fellow colleague uh, from Lagan Valley, I also, and I know that on behalf of the SDLP, I wish the organisers and the athletes every success and wish it to be noted we will be supporting the LCM today. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Mr. John Blair. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister also for the information uh, she, she's brought today and, and made us aware of? The LCM in front of us uh, extends the Birmingham Commonwealth Game Bill, of course, to Northern Ireland. The bill creates a new offence to stop unauthorised sales or resale of tickets for the Birmingham Commonwealth Games. On behalf of the Alliance Party, Principal Deputy Speaker, I welcome the bill particularly because it includes opportunity for people who genuinely cannot use their tickets to be able to sell them for face value cost. This will stop uh, the ticket touts while taking reasonable steps to protect those unable to use their tickets because of illness, family emergency or other justifiable uh, reason. I am fully aware the legislation will end the day after the Games. This was the case for, I believe, both the Olympic Games and uh, 2012 and the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in 2014 also. Hopefully, when the Minister responds, she can tell us how the bill, or a bit more about how the bill, will prevent the ticket touts, and hopefully also, as was alluded to earlier, a bit more information about the level of fine that could be introduced um, if someone is found guilty of an offence. Thank you. Thank you. No other member has indicated to me or is indicating to me that they wish to speak in this debate, so I call the Minister for uh, Justice Mrs Naomi Long to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Minister. Um, thank you, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. And I want to thank members um, of the House for considering this motion and for the contributions that were made today. Um, I also want to put on record my thanks for the Justice Committee for its very thorough report and to the Executive for its consideration of the issues at hand at a time when we had many pressing issues to deal with. 
Um, a number of members have raised issues, and I suppose I would want to take the opportunity, um, if I may push a little at the door um, opened by the chairman, um, to say that I think it is a good opportunity for people who are genuinely interested in sport um, and these kind of big ticket events to participate and to see that kind of sport live. It won't come as any surprise to people that I am not a participant in sport, but I am often a spectator and I do very much enjoy um, watching it. Um, and I know what a thrill it can be to see those events take place live. Um, and to be able to be part, for example, of the London Olympics was quite a memorable experience and I hope people will take that opportunity. However, those tickets are often expensive and therefore it is absolutely critical that they're kept um, affordable, um, as Mr Catney quite correctly pointed out, by avoiding other people reselling tickets illegally for profit. I think it's also important to remember that people who, for very genuine reasons, are unable to use tickets that they get, and you know how complex these ticketing systems can be, um, can still exchange those tickets or sell them on a not-for-profit basis so that they're not out of pocket, um, but that they are also um, not um, in a situation where they have to lose um, the money for the ticket and where the seat goes unused, because I think it's important that everyone is able to avail of tickets um, and able to use all the tickets that, that are sold. Um, in terms of the level of fine, I think the significance of the level of fine reflects the increasing value um, of the market for secondary selling of tickets. To put it in context, I think the figure for um, secondary ticketing market is around a billion pounds a year in the UK. Obviously, that will include some legitimate resellers, so people who sell because they can't attend. But anecdotally, we understand the vast majority of people who put tickets up for sale are professional traders um, and touts. Um, in terms of a recent court case, for example, in Leeds, to put in context how valuable um, this kind of trade can be um, and the significant profit that criminals can make from it, it was reported that they had made around three and a half million pounds of net profit between them, two individuals, um, and they were sentenced to a total of six and a half years in prison for that. So you can see that from an organised crime perspective, it can also be quite a lucrative market in terms of ways of raising funds. And therefore, it was important, and I think um, Mr Blair is quite correct, it is important um, that the fines that are introduced are commensurate uh, with the seriousness, potentially, of the offences that may be committed. So I am pleased for the support that we've had today in the Chamber. I think it is sensible that these provisions are carried forward in a Westminster Bill. And so on this occasion, um, I would ask the, uh, the House to support passing this motion um, to ensure that everyone can enjoy the Commonwealth Games in an affordable and also in a legal manner. Thank you, Minister. The question is that the motion standing on the order paper be agreed. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, if any, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item on the order paper is a motion on support for sheep and beef farms throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Before I ask the clerk to read the motion, I am mindful of the fact that most members in the indicative timings were expecting this item to be debated at two.